Hey everyone, this week's video is going to be a comparison of all different types of line followers. So as I said in the opening, today's video is going to be a back-to-back -back comparison of five different types of line followers. There's going to be a Boolean line follower, also known as a zigzag line follower, two sensor line follower, a proportional line follower, then a two sensor proportional line follower, and then finally a PID line follower. And the idea behind this video is to give you all of the information you need to decide which type of line follower you'd like to use for your robot. Now, with the exception of the zigzag line follower, I have a video explaining how to make each of these types of uh, line followers. And I'll put the little card or an annotation up each time the line follower comes up. So if you're interested, you can just click on that and it will bring you to the video teaching you how the line follower works and how to build it. So in this video, I'm going to briefly go over how the line follower works, show you the program, show you the line follower in action, and then outline the pros and cons and why you may choose to select a certain line follower over another. The first type of line follower I'll be talking about today is a Boolean line follower. It's also known as a zigzag line follower, and it gets its name because that's exactly what it does when it's on the line. It zigzags back and forth. This is hands down the simplest line follower you can program and you just program it by having it turn in one direction when it sees the white part of the line and have it turn in the opposite direction when it sees the black part of the line. So in this case, the robot will turn right when it sees white and then left when it sees black. Now, as with any line follower, a Boolean line follower has positive and negatives to using it. The main positive of using this type of line follower is that it's very simple and easy to understand because there's very little going on in the programming. However, there are quite a few downsides of using this. There is no straight case. That means the robot's always going to be turning in one direction. It's not going to be just driving straight at any point in time. So you're always going to have a constant zigzag motion left to right when your robot is moving. And also, the turning does not adapt. It always uses whatever turning setting that you've given it, whether it be a 5% turn or a 15% turn. It does not adapt its turning radius, and therefore it's not going to be very good when the line starts to change. Like if you have a line that has complex curves that change in radius, this is going to be a poor choice for that type. Next up we have the two sensor line follower and as its name suggests it uses two sensors. It operates similar to the boolean line follower in the way that it uses true false logic when turning. However, with the addition of an extra sensor, we can now add an extra case so instead of just having left and right cases, we can also have a straight case. Basically, this line follower works uh, when neither sees the black line, the robot will drive straight. If the left sensor sees the black line, the robot will steer to the left. And if the right sensor sees the black line, the robot will drive right. Now time for the pro-con of a two-sensor line follower. The advantage of using a two-sensor line follower is that it's still fairly simple, like the last line follower. It follows directly on top of the line as opposed to the side of it, which is a unique advantage to the two sensor line follower, because most line followers are going to actually follow to the side of the line on the boundary between the black and the white, as opposed to actually be on top of the black. And finally, using two sensors means that the line follower is less likely to lose the line. However, there are also downsides to using this line follower. It requires two color sensors, which can get expensive. Since this program still uses Boolean logic when turning, it still zigzags a bit, and it can even zigzag excessively if you don't have it adjusted correctly. And then finally, like the last one, there is no adaptation to the turning radius. It's always a constant turning sharpness to whatever you've set it to. It never adjusts, and so if you have a complex line with variable turns, this is going to be a poor choice for that because it can only be optimized for one type of line or one type of turn. Our third type of line follower is the good old-fashioned proportional line follower that many of you will be familiar with. A proportional line follower uses one color sensor and it uses a target value and measures how far off the target value it is to steer itself back onto the line and the error is proportional to the correction it makes, hence the name of the line follower. One advantage of using a proportional line follower like this is that it's still fairly simple. It only needs four programming blocks inside of a loop. In addition, the line follower is very adjustable and you will have very smooth line following. And if you have a complex line with different types of turns, the correction adapts based on the error. So it's more likely that this line follower will be able to stay with 
a very curvy, complex line. The downside of using this line follower is that it's going to require some time to fine-tune the arbitrary value, which is what scales how sharp or smooth your corrections are but this really shouldn't take too long in practice. Our fourth line follower is a two sensor proportional line follower. And this is exactly what it sounds like. It uses the skeleton of the two sensor proportional line follower that we mentioned before and integrates the algorithm of the proportional line follower when it's making its turns. So it's a hybrid between a two sensor and a proportional line follower. The advantage of this line follower, and what makes it unique, is it has both of the advantages of a two sensor line follower and a proportional line follower. It follows on top of the line, and it's less likely to lose a line, like the two sensor line follower. However, it also has the smoothness and the adaptability of a proportional line follower. Like I said, you can adjust a proportional line follower quite a bit. Now, the downside is that, like a two sensor follower, it requires two sensors, which should be implied by the name. And also, it requires some time to be fine-tuned because you have an arbitrary value. And finally, some may not choose to use it because uh, they may find it too redundant, but that's all a matter of opinion. Finally, we have a PID line follower. This is the most advanced and complex line follower that we've mentioned so far. A PID line follower is similar to a proportion line follower. In fact, that's where the P in the name PID comes from. However, it also has integral and derivative cases, which add onto the proportional line follower to make a more sophisticated line follower that can read its overall trend over time and also predict what its next error is going to be. And with the addition of these two cases, the integral and the derivative, that makes the PID line follower that much more accurate when it's doing its job. Now let's go over the positives and negatives of using a PID line follower. Well, this really is the most advanced line follower, and it's the best in every measurable way, as long as it's really tuned correctly. It's the smoothest, the most adaptable, the most reliable, and the most adjustable line follower you can make. However, you pay a price in that it requires a lot of understanding of the math that goes into it, and the video that I've made that explains how to make it will help this. But it's also a very large and complex and very unwieldy program. If you remember, I showed the screenshot of the program, and it was just gigantic. It almost didn't fit on the screen. And then finally, it requires a lot of time to get this program working correctly. Because unlike a proportional line follower, which had one arbitrary value, a PID line follower now has three arbitrary values that each need to be adjusted. And this can take a while to finally tune it in. But I do recommend that if you want to uh, pursue this type of line follower that you do spend a lot of time adjusting the three arbitrary values because at the end after you've gone through all this time to understand it and adjust it this is the most rewarding line follower that there is thanks for watching my tutorial this week if you found it helpful be sure to subscribe for more tutorials like this every week and if you have an idea for a tutorial be sure to submit it in the comments section below thank you and I'll see you next time bye